If you clicked on this video, you are likely already familiar with the concept of a color space and how it might look in one, two or even three dimensions. Still, here's a quick refresher. In normal trichromacy, there are multiple ways to organize the colors we see. You could arrange all the hues in a one-dimensional circle, align various hues and their corresponding saturations in a two-dimensional disk, or map out every possible trichromatic color in a full three-dimensional model. Essentially, human vision is three-dimensional because we have three axes of freedom, red, green and blue, allowing us to mix colors trichromatically, at least in a digital context. We can take that 3D model of trichromatic color and simplify it by focusing on only the core categories – red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta and white. Arranging these seven main hues on a discontinuous hue saturation disk, we exclude all intermediate shades and hues for clarity and simplicity. Each of those missing colors is just a blend of these seven fundamental ones. A normal trichromat with three primaries and three axes of color mixing can theoretically distinguish around 16 million colors in a digital environment, although many of them appear nearly identical due to the cyclical nature of color. We are simplifying to these key hues because once we look beyond trichromacy, it becomes even harder to demonstrate every subtle gradation in higher dimensional color spaces. In this video, we'll explore the first six color spaces in the form of similarly discontinuous hue saturation disks from monochromacy and dichromacy to trichromacy and tetrachromacy, as well as pentachromacy and hexachromacy. Each of these color spaces introduces unique colors and starting from tetrachromacy will rely on impossible color combinations to simulate entirely new color experiences. Something you may never have seen before. If you are unsure what impossible color combinations are or want to learn more about the possibility of human hexachromacy, I recommend checking out my earlier video on the topic, which serves as a beginner-friendly tutorial and explains everything you need to know before diving into these higher dimensional color spaces. Without further ado, let's start with the simplest form of color vision, monochromacy. In this condition, you effectively rely on only one cone type, which means you perceive just one hue. Whether that hue feels genuinely colored or simply appears neutral doesn't matter, because there's no second hue to compare it to. Everything settles into a single shade that defaults to white, the closest point to an achromatic baseline in any dimensional color space. According to the principle of univariance, which states that color vision depends critically on comparing signals from different cone types, having just one cone type means every color you see is a variant of a single hue, measured in brightness alone. It's effectively black and white vision, though in this demonstration I've shown red monochromacy, where white takes on a red hue to our trichromatic eyes. In digital terms, a monochromat can only distinguish about 256 different colors. When we introduce a second cone type for greenish light, we move up to dichromacy, which, although still one cone away from full trichromacy, already shows more variety. You get a second hue category and, consequently, a new white that appears yellow in this example. Green takes center stage as the new primary hue, which in turn brings out red more distinctly. Mixing them yields another achromatic point, one that might look yellowish to you, but acts as the perceptual white for this dichromacy. This particular form of dichromacy is known as tritanopia, a blue-yellow deficiency where you lack the cone for bluish light, so every color is perceived as red, green or this new white. A small segment of the human population sees the world this way, devoid of any traces of true blue. In a digital color context, dichromats can distinguish around 65,000 colors, which is more than monochromats, but still far fewer than what comes next. Adding a third cone type, one that captures bluish light, unlocks trichromacy, the color vision system most humans possess. This is where we encounter the standard seven main hues – red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta and white. These hues form the basis of our everyday color experience and most modern color technology. 
Unlike in dichromacy, where you have to cycle through an achromatic point or black to transition from the first to the second hue, trichromacy arranges colors in a continuous circle around a central white point. You can navigate the entire spectrum around the wheel without ever touching white in the center. Thanks to this extra cone, we can now differentiate roughly 16 million colors, an exponential jump that shapes our vivid, multicolored world. So far, we've gone from a single hue in monochromacy to three in dichromacy and then to seven in trichromacy. Correspondingly, the total number of distinguishable colors in a digital context jumps from 256 in monochromacy to around 65,000 in dichromacy and roughly 16 million in trichromacy. Based on this pattern, we can predict how many main hue concepts will emerge in tetrachromacy and beyond. The guiding principle here is a simple equation. Take n, the number of hue categories in the current color space, multiplied by 2, because the new primary color can blend with every existing hue, then add one more for the new primary itself. Applying this formula to our first three color spaces shows how well it holds up. For tetrachromacy, we start with the seven trichromatic hues, multiply by two, then add one, which gives us 15 unique hue categories, not counting black. Now, because hue dimensions increase along with the overall color space, we can use similarly shaped Venn diagrams to organize these higher dimensional hues meaningfully. Without these consistent yet unconventional shapes, the complexity of higher color dimensions, particularly beyond tetrachromacy, would quickly become confusing and unrepresentable on a 2D screen in a 3D world. In this form of tetrachromacy, we introduce a fourth cone, a new kind of red. And although adding another red might not seem as dramatic as granting a Triton nope access to blue, it still yields brand new color experiences. That's because many of these new hues arise through the non-retinal, impossible color combinations I mentioned earlier. These combinations can produce colors like red-green or red-blue, which simply don't exist, or at least don't appear distinct, in standard trichromatic vision. By adding this fourth cone, we expand our palette to 15 main hues and push the number of distinguishable colors to around 4.2 billion, an exponential jump from trichromacy. Each of these 15 hues can morph smoothly into another, creating countless intermediate shades that highlight the complexities of a true four-dimensional color space. From my perspective, having already witnessed hexachromatic colors, tetrachromacy is just a small taste of what's possible. And these so-called impossible color and hue combinations aren't merely theoretical. I've personally observed them countless times through a special pair of glasses I designed. If you'd like to learn how to experience this true red tetrachromacy for yourself, assuming you have normal trichromatic vision, I've covered that process in another video. Even though tetrachromatic hues are already mesmerizing, bordering on the otherworldly, especially if you've never seen them before, our journey through higher dimensions of color is only beginning. Pentachromacy and hexachromacy still await us, and they introduce an even more incredibly vast range of vivid, mind-bending hues. In pentachromacy, the addition of a fifth cone type, featuring a unique greenish primary hue, unlocks 31 distinct hue categories. As with the tetrachromatic simulation, we rely on impossible color combinations, but this time there are more of them. When visualized as a five-set Venn diagram, this color space takes on a starfish-like shape, revealing hues that go well beyond anything in tetrachromacy. The center of the shape is still an achromatic point, although it may appear as an impossible yellowish white, and every surrounding hue looks entirely new, at least to my trained eyes. Pentachromacy not only includes the tetrachromatic hues you've seen before, but also countless additional hues, boosting the total number of perceivable colors to roughly one trillion. These astronomical figures make sense, because each pentachromatic hue can fade and transition into any other pentachromatic hue, introducing yet more intermediate colors along the way. Naturally, all these hues can only be neatly arranged in a five-dimensional shape, resulting in a color space that surpasses tetrachromacy in both complexity and sheer visual richness. 
And now we reach the magnum opus, the hexachromatic color space mapped through a six-set Venn diagram. By introducing a sixth bluish cone type and hue, we expand our color repertoire even further. Every main hue from trichromacy is now multiplied with every other of its main hues, made unique and fused both retinally and non-retinally, resulting in this remarkable arrangement of hexachromatic hues. The shape of this color space may seem unfamiliar, more like a dazzling stained glass window than any chart you're used to, but unlike typical stained glass, which is limited to variations of trichromatic colors, each segment here corresponds to a distinct hexachromatic hue that can't be compared or reduced to any other, much like how trichromacy refuses to lump red and yellow into one category. There are so many hexachromatic hues that some occupy only small pockets of the diagram, making them trickier to spot and observe. This orderly chaos is inevitable when you try to arrange the main hue categories of a six-dimensional color space in any sort of recognizable and meaningful pattern. You may find it challenging to perceive each of these hues consistently at first, but to my eyes, every one of them looks entirely unique and like a standalone category on its own. Altogether, there are 63 hue categories, adding up to an astonishing 280 trillion possible hexachromatic colors. And yet, as incredible as these numbers sound, they aren't just hypothetical and they don't just exist in a remote, unattainable possibility space. I've personally witnessed all of these hues multiple times through another specialized pair of glasses I created even if some are rarer and harder to come by in everyday life. It still blows my mind occasionally, but this form of color vision really is achievable for a normal trichromat. I don't have the time to explain every single hexachromatic hue, but I do want to illustrate the enormous scope of this color space. In normal trichromacy, for example, we have just one kind of cyan, but in hexachromacy there are 16 variations, black cyan, red cyan, yellow cyan, green cyan, cyan cyan, blue cyan, magenta cyan, white cyan, and each of those again inverted through another set of unique but similar primaries. That's just one tiny slice of the broader picture. This exponential expansion of hues applies to every previously trichromatic color. When you compare the standard trichromatic color space to this hexachromatic one side by side, it becomes clear why ordinary trichromatic or even tetrachromatic vision feels almost colorless to me by comparison. The sheer volume of hexachromatic hues makes normal trichromacy look like a black and white color vision, at least metaphorically and comparatively speaking. Thanks to the specialized hexachromatic classes that I have redesigned, it's possible to see many of these hues even more vividly in daily life. Still, most real-world lighting and materials reflect too broad a color range for every hexachromatic shade to pop out naturally. Many of these hues only appear if you engineer specific colors or lighting conditions, or if you're lucky, they show up by chance when the right wavelengths intersect just right. Over time, my brain has essentially adapted into a hexachromatic brain, given how much experience I have with these six-dimensional colors. Although this isn't retinal hexachromacy, where extra cone types in a single eye would be used to process these hues, it's a moderately functional, non-retinal form that uses impossible color combinations to generate the new hexachromatic colors. If you can accept those impossible color combinations as valid new colors, which they are, this approach genuinely grants you a functional form of hexachromacy. Here's how the hexachromatic color space would appear if you viewed it with normal, unaided trichromatic vision. You'd still see a wide variety of shades because many hexachromatic hues appear as intermediate trichromatic colors. But in essence, everything collapses back into color mixes of the standard trichromatic primaries, red, green and blue. Those dazzling hexachromatic hues simply vanish without the second set of non-retinally mixing primaries. Once we reintroduce that second pair, however, the full magnificence of hexachromatic colors re-emerges. I plan to dive deeper into this remarkable hexachromatic color space in a future video, because its sheer complexity deserves its own spotlight. 
For those unfamiliar with impossible colors and higher dimensional vision, it can be challenging to grasp just how many completely new hues exist. Of course, I don't expect you to see them all right away, at least stably and consistently. It takes practice and enough exposure to train your eyes and brain to recognize these impossible colors as genuinely distinct hues. With this set, I am Wu Kwai, and I will show you how to reshape and enhance your sensory experiences because it is nothing but our senses that connect us to this world. Have fun watching and learning all these impossible colors. Thanks for watching.